to sign for? Should I get closer to the camera? Why no, I said, I, I'm saying to them, don't do that. Don't do that because everybody's experience is different. Don't right, do that. Right. Don't wait on God to give you a sign because his sign is the fact that your life is in turmoil. His sign is the fact that you're, you're, you, you feel like empty. You feel like there's a part of you missing. That's his sign. The fact that you're, okay, you've accomplished all of this. Yeah. Like these rich people who are sh chasing more and more. And they're like, dang, I, I just... I'm just, I just feel like I'm missing, you missing Jesus. You got all the money, you got all yeah. the wealth, you live in this lavish house, but yet it's cold, it's empty. It doesn't feel like a home because you're missing Jesus. Mm. The married couple, you're married and you're like, I love him, but I love her. But if there's a but there, you're missing Jesus because yeah. Jesus is the third person in your marriage. If it's just the two of you, that's it. You need that third person you in your marriage. Third. If you're yeah. a little, if you're that kid that's being bullied and, and, and you know, you know, but you're like, ah, oh, you're missing Jesus. If you're that young adult that's just trying to figure it out and, and you just don't know, you're missing Jesus. Jesus is who you are missing. And if yeah. you're missing Jesus, we are telling you, man, when I tell you he'll fulfill you, yes. he will yes. fulfill you. Yes. He he will make you feel so whole. If you are with, if you said yes to Jesus and you, that means that you haven't really surrendered your will to God mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. God, God fills you up. Oh, yes, he does. God fills you yes. up. Yes. Like yes. the woman at the well, she said, please give me that water so I don't have to come back here to draw water again. Mm. And Jesus said, like, literally, I'm that well. I fill you up. That's one of the prayers I pray now. I said, Lord, fill me up. Yes. Yes. Fill me up. So if you're that person and you feel empty, we're telling you, you need Jesus. The sweetest name. There's a song that says the sweetest name I know, right? Name Jesus. I know. The sweetest name I know. That's the sweetest name you will ever call on. Don't listen to nobody telling you, oh, Jesus is a white man's religion. No, nah, don't mm. listen to that. Mm -mm. Don't listen to that. Nah. Listen to the fact that he was humble enough to come down from heaven, come down from heaven, walk this earth. Jesus said, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. In heaven, I had, I had a whole mansion with a whole bunch of rooms, but I come down here and I have no place to sleep. Mm. I'm doing that for you. Like Jesus did that for you. I had a riding on a donkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So go ahead, Brother Nick. Yeah, so the last, this is the last part. So let me tell you something. Before I go into the last part, let me tell you something, boy. When it comes to obeying the gospel, the devil will throw every, everything in your way for you not to say, he, like he don't want people saying yes to the gospel. You talking about, he, he'll, throw, he'll say like, Give him this, give him that, give him this, give him that, give it. The devil threw everything at me. Because remember, um, whoever is not on God's side is the enemy of God. So it's it's only two sides. It's God's side and there's the devil's side. It's either you're doing God's will or you're doing the devil's will. Some people don't like to think of it that way. You're either doing the devil's will or you're doing God's will. <laughs> so, so before Christ, I was doing the devil's will. I was doing things for the devil breaking homes doing all kind of crazy stuff right so now the devil's like we can't lose him he's part of our team we can't lose him so it's like it's like, like a war a tug of war right the angels and the demons fighting obviously the angels got the victory but praise god thank you jesus i'm saved now <laughs> so, so my fifth the fifth episode um is going to be uh called a new life how god rescued me from darkness so i, I I walked through the whole process, how God, you know, walk, you know, how I end up getting saved because God came to me in a supernatural way on May 24, 2009. I got baptized and I obeyed the gospel on July 26, 2009. So my question is, somebody will say, why did it take you so long? Why did it take you? I don't even know how much weeks. It took you nearly two months to obey what were you doing for two months? I kind of like walk them through that process. I mean, I didn't share every detail because it probably would have taken too long, but it shows you that how God came to me one way and it took me two months 
it's, it's kind of like one of those Paul situations. Paul was on the way to Damascus. He was blind. Then, you know, it took him some time. You know, it took, yeah, it took him three days. Yeah, it took him some time. You know, but for me, it just took me nearly two months. And then let me tell you something, boy. It didn't have to take two months because I explained it in what happened to week one. I went to the Christian Bible bookstore and then I got me a Bible. I was supposed to get saved that day. But because of the spiritual warfare, that's why I, I got to put it on the spirits because people don't understand what's taking place. So when a person walks up to somebody and says, hey, man, I would love to invite you to church, love, love to invite you to worship, rather. I'd love to invite you to worship, get a word. And let's just say that guests do come. And they're like, man, that was a word. And then next you know, they said, that was a good word. And then week two, they be like, hey, you want to come? No, nah, I want to come. That's because the devil sent them something their way to throw them off, to distract them, to not, like, don't go back. Don't go back. So he'll throw something, throw a curveball. You don't need to go back. So what happened with me, week one, the minister plainly said that God was using the minister as a mouthpiece. Somebody here needs to get, get their life to the Lord. I'm like, oh my, it is me. It is me. <laughs> it is me that who need to get my lips out to the Lord. But what I did, the devil was in my ears. I, I got, you know, I got to keep it real. The devil was in my ears. The devil was like, you sure you want to give up all those women? You sure you want to be on God's side? You know y'all going to have a checklist, right? You know you, there's going to be a lot of do nots. You can't cheat. You, oh, this is the big one that he told me in my ears. You know you ain't going to be able to fornicate no more, right? You know you got to wait until marriage, right? And I'm like, oh, I got to wait until <laughs> I'm, I got, <laughs> I'm look week one the devil's in my ears you know you can't club no more right you know you can't be a child of god still clubbing juking it with those women and going to church and worshiping you know you can't do that no more right you know you can't be getting all those numbers you know you can't be dating different women no more right and i'm like ah so you mean i gotta wait until i get married to do to do because I like to do to do, and you talking about I can't do to do because <laughs> I'm to obey the gospel, I can't do to do. Obviously, you could tell what was hindering me from obeying the gospel. It was women. Because I kept telling myself, like, because I wanted to satisfy my flesh. I wanted to satisfy my flesh, and that was the reason why I told myself I didn't want to obey the gospel. Because it was for pleasure. Sin is pleasurable. Yeah. No matter how you look at it, no matter how you paint it, no matter how you say it, sin is pleasurable if you're a thrill sleep seeker sin is pleasurable there are things that you probably have done that most people would look at you and be like dang you did that sin is pleasurable it will have you doing stuff that you yeah if you were a christian you would be like oh no absolutely not clutching your pearls but when you in the world let me not even say that because i was in the world and i did some stuff but sin is pleasurable. Until I, until we understand that our soul is on the line, no matter how pleasurable that sin is, my soul is still on the line. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. soul is still, yes, I may be a member of the body. My soul is still on the line because there's going to come that, I'm going to have a reckoning. The book of my remembrance is going to open and God is going to question me on all those things that I did in the body and outside the body still there i'm not saying again i'm not god i don't know but when you come into the body and i love that you're saying it, is that satan got in your ear and be like that boy you sure you won't let go of them women man ain't no woman worth your soul ain't no mm. man worth your soul mm. they don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in god does so there is no one on this mm. life on this earth that is worth your soul. I don't care how much your flesh is burning. Go take a cold shower, hit the gym, something. I'm talking to myself. So <laughs> I'm telling you, look, like for real, like you have to learn self-control. And I love that you're sharing this, Brother Nick, because that, that's the reason a lot of people don't obey the gospel. That's the reason. That is the reason, whether it's heterosexual, whether it's homosexual. When your body burns and your body is on fire, you want something to quench that quench that fire and you're not thinking my soul is on the line what you're thinking is i need to quench this thirst mm -hmm. and I, I need it quenched now mm -hmm. so i don't care who i'm gonna call and the sad part is you get somebody involved 
in your foolishness. Mercy. So now t both of y'all souls are on the line. Mercy. Wow. Both of your souls are on the line. Yeah. Go ahead, finish. No, I, I was saying that because I, I, I really wanted people to get into my mind, my thinking while I was sitting there in the congregation. You know, like, because people going to say like, man, hold up. Whatever happened, happened in May and you got saved in July. Dude, what happened? You know what I mean? Like, why it took you so long? Well, Satan, Satan, it was, it was a fight because you got to look at it like that. When, when a person, before a person cross over and they obey the gospel, they are an agent for Satan, whether or not they're going to say it or not. If you're doing things to break, uh, tear down God's kingdom, actually, you can't tear down God's kingdom. Like, you're building Satan's kingdom up. So if you're doing things to build Satan's kingdom up, you're not of God. So if you're listening to mu music that's, that's building Satan's kingdom up, and you're not doing anything to glorify God, you got to check what side you on. I already knew what side I was on before Christ. I knew that I clubbed a lot out because the, the club. So, you know, the club domain, it's like the club domain is like hell. It's like there's like a whole bunch of demons. Because the, the minute you start drinking and feeling woozy, like, yeah, it's like you become a different person. Like, yeah, boy, I'm feeling this now, boy. Yeah, we got it now. We, we in. It's like you become a whole different personality. That's a demon. That's a demon. And my thing, <laughs> I wasn't a drinker. It was the music for me. Music was my high, and sometimes people don't realize music. Satan was a, was what a musician, right? Yeah, he he was the angel of music. Music to me, I had to stop listening to sir. I never forget. I was in the club. I was wearing some white shorts. I'm a Christian now, with this colorful top and these pumps, and I walked into the club. And I'm getting ready to dance. And I just felt the spirit say, you ain't tired of this? Like, mm. you, you ain't tired of this? Wow. And I looked. And I said, what am I doing here? And my sister, my sister was like, she ain't dancing. I would spend the whole night dancing. And I wasn't. I was like, I'm ready to go home. And that was, that was the last time for me hitting the club. Wow. Sometimes it's hard for you. But... When you start really reading the word of God and, and, and the Holy Spirit is being fed, the Holy Spirit be like, you ain't tired. I don't, I don't want to be here. <laughs> but, uh, like you bringing me, you bringing me into this domain, look around. And when you look around and, and you know what I was tired of? I was tired of them Haitian men <laughs> trying to <laughs> keep hitting on me. You ain't yeah, pay for yeah. me to come into this club. Yeah, you want to yeah. buy me a drink so you could get me drunk. And the mm. Holy Spirit said, you ain't tired. And I'm be, I still remember to this day what I was wearing when I said, I can't do this no more. I left that one thing alone, but I still have things I struggle with. And I'm, I'm, um, as we're bringing this to a close, I really want people to know, yeah, some of us, we're going to come into the body and we're going we gonna to go hard to the paint and we're going we gonna to fight for Jesus. And some of us, we're going to sit on that fence. Let me tell you a secret. The fence book belongs to Satan. So mm. you sit on the fence if you want to. It still belongs to Satan. It's not mm. Jesus. You're either all in or you're not. Go ahead, brother. Nick. Close us out. Um, so so there y'all have it. Um go on YouTube, subscribe to the Call by God podcast YouTube channel, um, where I get to share all the visuals. You know, Adney is interviewing me. And like I said, it's been um a long time coming. Um I interviewed everybody else um dating all the way back to 2020 so i had the pleasure to send back for nearly four years just listen to other people transformative stories and conversion stories how they came to christ and i tell you adney just going back to all the people that we had discussions with in the past i enjoyed every last story um we had a few episodes where we had people actually shed tears because it's the same tears that you shed a uh, tears of appreciation a gratitude a thankfulness, like, God, thank you for saving me. And um, interviewing or having discussions with our brothers and sisters in Christ about their conversion story, it has humbled me. And like I said, everybody come different ways. There are some people that I was raised in the church, and they had to find their own identity of what it means to have a relationship with Christ. Because it's different when you have your mother and your father going hard for Christ, and all of a sudden now you become a Christian. Okay, I want to know this Jesus too, right? So you got to find your own relationship with Jesus. And there are some that came from bad neighborhoods. And then so when they got into Christ, they, they really appreciate it. So everybody walk is different. Everybody experiences different.
but we all come to one thing. We hear the gospel um, of Jesus Christ. It says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We believe in Jesus Christ. Then we confess him to the world. And then, and then you repent, you know, you, you repent, you have a change of heart, change of mind, and then you got to get baptized um, for the remission of your sins. And then when you get baptized, he gives you the, the gift, which is the Holy Spirit. And that's what helped me along, along the way, Adney. So when I got saved, um, and they're going to have to go back um, whenever that episode come out, part five, um, when I share the detail of how I got saved, um, it wasn't easy because people think that, because there's two things that could happen. Sometimes people come to Christ because there's situations that's going on in their, in their lives. So they look at it like, well, maybe God is allowing this to happen to me. So maybe if I obey the gospel, everything is going to be good, right? So for you know this, and I know this, when I obeyed the gospel, things actually got worse. <laughs> so things got worse. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my journey from the point where I was when I first gave my life to the Lord in July and to the point where I am now. Because I am what I am only by the grace of God. I don't take no credit. All these things that I, God has given me, I take zero credit. It's, it's nothing that I have done. It's all that God has done. So um, when God has given us this platform to, to have our brothers and our sisters come on, because, Eddie, the thing about CBG, right, podcast, it's like, like meeting your first love. So before I got married, when I met my wife, man, Adney, man, man, we just was on the phone. We just... We was kicking it. You know, that's that old school language. We kicking it. Just kick. We were kicking it. Like, oh, yeah, you you hang up. No, I don't want to hang up. No, you hang up. Jesus Christ wants that very same thing. The same relationship. Like, when we get in a covenant with him, that's so, that's, that excitement that we once had. Like the Philippian eunuch, when he got saved, left, left with so much excitement. When people share their stories, God want us to always remember that day he reconciled us back to him. So that's why I believe in the power of CBG, because when we invite people on, they're remembering. It's like, you know how every Lord is there, we remember Christ's death, burial, resurrection. He said, do this in remembrance of me. When people come on CBG, they're remembering what Jesus Christ did for them. Yeah, the testimonies of X, Y, Z, how God delivered them. No, I want them to remember why they got saved, how they got saved, and what God has done for them on Calvary. I want them to remember the point of baptism, that gift that God has given them. So when they come on CBG, I want them to remember because that baptism is special. It's a covenant. It's a relationship. That's the relationship we're talking about. Not everybody made it, Adney. A lot of people die day by day, every day, every second, every hour. But God called you. Brother, Brother Odor preached this message today. He said, um, yes, we can. And one of the messages that he gave was in Matthew chapter 22, where there was a king that sent a servant out. He sent an invite to folks. And these individuals rejected an invite. So the king was like, oh, all right, go to these random people, good and evil. And then there was people that came. And there was one that came. He wasn't dressed properly. And then uh, he got kicked out. And there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. And at the end of the verse says, many are called but few are chosen. So I want Christians to understand that when they come on CBG, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm humble enough to listen to your story, how, how you obey the gospel, because I love it. I love hearing a God-written love story, how somebody obeyed the gospel. And I also want the Christian to understand that many are called and few are chosen, and you are just a few that was chosen by God. That's, that's what I want. Amen. Amen, y'all. Y'all have it. So tomorrow <laughs> is episode one. I pray that I pray that it blesses you. I pray that you share it with somebody. Share it with a non-believer. Share it with someone that you are um, discipling to help them see that, look, you're not the only one. All of us at some point in time had to obey the gospel. Are we perfect at it? Nah. Nope. Nope, but guess what? God says, my grace is sufficient. I'm going to give you that time to get it together. So Amen. Don't, don't wear out God's grace. <laughs> and, and let me say this. Um, like I said on the top of this live, um, we're not doing this to become rich, but, you know, we do got to keep the lights on. So if you could support CBG any means necessary, um, go on the www.callbygodpodcast and support us 
That is www. I'm of the W's. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I always mess up the W's. I always mess up the W's. www. <laughs> and then go on donate. You could, you know, create a recurring donation, one dollar, five dollars. Cause like I said, we got to keep the lights on. And I do it for the, you know, Adney and I do it for the passion of our heart. But like I said, you know, these things cost, right? Technology costs. And we got to pay for it on a monthly basis. So if y'all feel that this is beneficial to you or beneficial to your friends, family, neighbors, or whomever you share with, please support the podcast. Like I said, we are not trying to get rich. All I want, Adney, is this podcast to pay for itself. I am not trying to be you no know, Bill Gates <laughs> or, or, or the richest pod, Christian podcast. I, that is not even on my mind. My thing is for people to get into the spiritual art that we know as the body of believers, the church of Christ, the church that belongs to Christ. That's my biggest concern. And I believe in the power of, of a testimony. But also, also, Adney, before we leave, I don't know who's on here. I don't know if in, anybody got any questions, um, you know, before we get off. I don't know if they got any questions. Questions. I don't even know. I don't even know how to click this thing on to see how many people are on. But um, if anybody, if people don't have any questions, if there's no questions, then that's fine with me. But Andy, I thank you so much because um, people think podcasting is easy. Podcasting is not easy. Um, any God-given mission that's going to be lifting God up or giving Him the glory, it's not going to be easy. It don't matter what it is. Is it, you could be writing a book. It's not going to be easy. Yep. You could have a podcast. You could be a preacher, yep. um, or you could be some form of a, a leadership. Have a yeah. leadership role in the church. It's not going to be easy. It's not. I, I would say this before we close: pray for people that's going hard for God. Amen. Because they're the ones Amen. that go through the most. Amen. It's not the ones that you see posting on social media. They live in their so-called best life. It's the ones that you see proclaiming. The yeah. ones that you see opening their mouth for Jesus, they the ones that get attacked the most. Amen. And they these don't preachers, stop. These they preachers. Keep going. These these preachers. Pray um, um, for them. Pray, pray for, for these them. men of God. Pray don't pray yes. on them. Pray yes. for them. Yes. Because these men of God are necessary. There are some who are going hard in the paint. Yes. I could name I could name several of them, uh, but I won't do that because I don't want nobody to be like she ain't say my name. But right. Pray for the men of God. Like really, um, they need our prayers, y'all. They're they're the ones that are feeding us. Their families sometimes get neglected because yeah. they're feeding us. And I definitely want to say this to men of God: Don't you neglect your family for 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 us crazy people. Your first ministry is home. Take care of home before you come to us. Yeah. Take care of home before you come to us. Amen. I'm telling you Amen. right now. Because that wife of yours, while, while you're going through it, she's on her knees. Sometimes she's crying to God for you. So take care of home. Don't you neglect her. And if you're a single brother, I'm going to say this. Find you a group of singles who are not afraid to walk this journey with you, who are not afraid to intercede on your behalf. I know you want a wife, but get yourself in a community of believers that you know will stand in the paint with you, will call out, will cry out to God on your behalf. Until God says, well, you've done, you've done such a marvelous job. Here she is. You go ahead. You can marry her. Yeah, but yeah. until then, I really, because I, single brothers get neglected. Single preachers get neglected. So I really want y'all to know. Well, I'm going to tell y'all right now. Y'all have a sister here in Atlanta who's praying for y'all. I, I may not know your name, but I'll say it. Yeah. I'll just say preachers, right? So yeah. keep your men of God in prayer. Also, Keep them in prayer. Also, one other thing before we go. Um, if you, if you don't have any questions on this live, and I don't know if you might see this on a later day, listen, if you're not saved and you want to get to know Jesus Christ, don't hesitate to send me an email at a called by God podcast at gmail.com. Again, it's called by God podcast at gmail.com. And I will point you in the right direction because I don't remember a time where, when I was seeking Christ or stumbled upon a video and then um, somebody was trying to help point me in the right direction. So it is my passion and it is my desire that if you want to get to know Jesus Christ, I could help you with that. Um, if there's any questions that you have, anything that may trouble you, I could help you with that and point you in, in the right direction. Because I believe, Adi, what we have is so loving. I I don't know what I would do without Christ. And, and I want people to have the very self-same thing. I can't be selfish with this stuff. So None I got to put can. it out there. And if they're, whoever's interested, they're not saved or they're contemplating like, man, I want to go hard for God too. I want to have purpose. 
I want to be just like you, Nick, like a, a man, young man watching this. Man, I want to go hard for you, hard for God, just like you, Nick. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I could point you to Christ. I will show Amen. you the way. And I'm sure mm -hmm. there's a sister out there that say, man, I see this sister so passionate like Adney. I want to be just like her, just have a love and purpose uh, driven for Christ. You could reach out to her, and I yep. would point you to her, and she would definitely point you in the right direction. Because that's what Amen. it's all about, is helping and facilitating and helping people get into the spiritual arc, like I alluded to, Amen. which is the body of Christ. So I think that's it, Adney. Again, thank you. Uh, we was on here for like over an hour. An hour, hour and 26 a half. minutes. I, I didn't realize that. But glory to God. Bless Amen. you. Tune in, subscribe to the channel. And y'all tell me what y'all think <laughs> in the comment section on the YouTube channel. Be Bye, y'all. Be blessed. Yeah.